Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and welcome to my very Lomax Christmas. Uh, last year I did a 31 Days of Christmas, which quite frankly was a bit of a killer, in which I, I, yeah, I reviewed one Christmas film every day of December. Uh, yeah, there was a bit much, I must say. So this year I thought I'd do something a little bit easier for me at any rate and just do one big bumper Christmas special episode. Uh, I've invited a few guests on so they will be cropping up at various intervals during this show. Um, I'm going to be doing a top five, top five Christmas movies, my personal top five. I'm also going to be doing a gift unboxing. One of the special guests that is on this show uh, sent me a gift in the post, a few gifts in fact. Um, so I, I, I will be unboxing that on this show. Uh, yeah, so Let's get into it. Let's start with my top five. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do my top five Christmas films, but I'm going to intersperse them throughout the show. Uh, but let's let's kick off with my number five choice, working my way up to my favourite Christmas film. So just before I give you my number five choice, I just want to give an honourable mention to a film I saw again recently, uh, which I'd forgotten was kind of a Christmas movie, uh, and that is LA Confidential. I've just done an essay about that film on my channel. It's one of my all-time favourite films, and to be honest, I'd probably say it's better than any of the films on this list. If I was, you know, if I, if I was ranking them in order, I would probably put it higher than any of the films on this list. I might struggle against my number one choice here, but certainly the rest, yeah, it would be higher. But Christmas is really, it's really like the first kind of third of the film. Um, you know, the first third of the film, you can tell it's set at Christmas, it's Christmas trees, you know, this, this, this that and the other. Um, but for much of the rest of the film, it isn't. So, yeah, so I, I've, I've kind of gone with films here in which the entirety of the film is set around Christmas or, or you know the, the Christmas message in particular is very strong within it uh, and, and with LA Confidential I kind of don't feel like it is I feel like uh, you know it, it is set at Christmas at the first first third um, but yeah there's, there's very little Christmas spirit in it in that regard great film great film but maybe not a great Christmas film um, yeah, so that was my honourable mention. Just wanted to mention that just because I had seen it recently. Um, and if you've seen the essay on my channel, you might be wondering, well, why didn't you put that in your top five? That's why. So let's get into my top five with my number five. My number five choice is Muppets Christmas Carol. Uh, yeah, I watch this film every year. It's my wife's favourite Christmas film, may even be her favourite film. Uh, and as such, we watch it every year. We watch my favourite Christmas film every year, which is obviously the number one film on this list. And we watch her favourite fil uh, Christmas film every year. Muppets Christmas Carol, uh, and I, I have grown to love it. You know, not quite as much as my wife, but we, you know, we do own the soundtrack. Uh, we we do watch it, like I say, every year, and I, I don't get bored of it. I, you know, each year I I see something maybe that I didn't see in it before because there's tons of work in it. You know, put you look at the puppetry work that goes into it. It's so detailed. There's so many little things going on in the background. Yeah, it is a great film, and I love the production design on it, the period setting. Uh, it's yeah, fantastic. Brian Henson obviously took over after his father died. You know, he took took hold of the Jim Henson Empire, so to speak, and he directed this, and he does a fabulous job, uh, more than proving himself equal to what his father set before him. So yeah, that was my number five choice for my for my top five Christmas films. Uh, we will get into the rest as this program goes on. But let me just introduce my first guest, uh, Graham. Uh, he, he's a good friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends on YouTube. We, we do a podcast together called Brits on Flicks. Uh, and yeah, I asked him to come on and just talk about some of his favourite Christmas movies that he likes to watch at this time of year. So Graham, over to you. Hi, I'm Graham from Man vs Film and first of all I'd like to thank Brian Lomax for inviting me onto his channel to talk about Christmas movies, something that I am quite passionate about and something that I'm sure everybody who's a film fan just loves to delve in to their favourite movies at this time of year. And I just thought I'd talk about maybe one or two movies that I really like to watch at this time of year. Christmas for me is, is particularly related to movies because I remember as a younger child really sitting down before we had satellite TV that, that many years ago 
that we used to sit and plan out all my movie watching, things that I was going to check out on the TV when they were coming on. It, it's synonymous with movies for me. It was a movie rich time and it's something that I really like to indulge in now that I'm a little bit older as well. And as well as the Christmas trees, the decorations, the hot chocolates, the, the cold winters and the warm indoors, a movie with the family is one of the best things I love to do at this time of year. And one that I discovered last year for the first time was The Polar Express, a movie that I kind of had shied away from, something I hadn't really delved too much into. And I think it was a real shame because I discovered something that was really fresh, really fantastic, really heartwarming and really imbued the Christmas spirit. It's a tale of a young boy who goes on the Polar Express to meet Santa Claus at the North Pole and along the way he meets some new friends, finds out some things about himself and ultimately has that Christmassy feeling. It's full of nice set pieces, songs, a great story and it looks fantastic. Um, I wasn't really keen on Bow Wolf or things like that that Zemeckis had done but this one really spoke to me and the family loves it as well and I think it is now firmly a Christmas favourite. One of uh, my favourite Christmas movies of all time is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It is a staple, something that I've watched throughout the years. It is the third entry in the National Lampoon Vacation series and it's a Christmas themed movie. Everything about it means that it shouldn't really work, but it does. In fact, I think it's down to Clark Griswold's behaviour as the guy who always wants to give the perfect holiday to his family fits so idealistically with the Christmas themes. And he just continually tries to give them the time of their life not realising that just being the family and just being together is all that everybody really wants. It is a heartwarming movie, it's ridiculously funny. Even now, after all the times I've seen it, I still laugh at it and I still think it is a brilliant Christmas movie to watch at this time of year. The last movie I really want to talk about is Bill Murray's Scrooged. I think it could possibly be my favourite Christmas movie ever. In fact, Brian and I did a podcast on it last year, just gushing over how fantastic it is. I love a Christmas Carol. I think it is a great Christmas story. It is the, the sort of pinnacle of Christmas movies in my eyes. And I think that the fact that it's put together with a sort of TV company executive, again, fits my sensibilities of movie making, making TV shows, Christmas spirit, all in this, along with Bill Murray's ridiculously awesome humour. He is a guy who just is simply just so funny. And here, with the tale that it's in, it just enriches the story so much so. It's such a fresh take on the old Scrooge story that we've seen so many times before and I just absolutely love it. These are just three of my favourite Christmas movies and when it comes to mind, things I want to watch and experience at this time of year. I love Christmas as I'm sure most of you do as well and I really hope you all have a fantastic Christmas, a great new year and you get to enjoy some fantastic Christmas movies with your loved ones. Thanks for letting me on your channel Brian and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you, Graham, for that. That was lovely. Uh, now, as you may remember at the start of this video, I said I was going to do a unboxing. Uh, Graham, as it happens, sent me a gift through the po post, a, a Christmas gift. Um, actually, a box full of Christmas gifts. Uh, but I filmed a reaction to it, basically, uh, just a couple of days ago, and I wanted to put it in this video, uh, make it part of this video. So we're going to go to that. We're going to go from me to me. Uh, so Brian, over to you. So I've rather generously been sent a package, a rather big package from Graham. No idea what's inside but I have taken some of the tape off just because I, I didn't want half of this video to be you witnessing my face looking constipated as I try to get through all the tape and get into the box. So yeah, the tape's been taken off, but I'm not seen inside. So I'm going to open it and see what is inside. Uh, yeah, exciting stuff. Uh, just whatever's in here. Thank you, Graham, for sending it. Pull this last bit of tape off. Uh, this one, okay. Have a look. Oh, okay, wrapped. Blime, blimey. Man alive, there's a lot in here and it's all wrapped, properly wrapped. This is insane. Um, wow, okay, let me, uh, there's a note, note inside. Um, nice. He said he doesn't mind if I read, but at the time that he wrote this, he was in quite a lot of pain. He, he, was, he was actually on his way to hospital 
uh, when when he put this together and put it in the post. Uh, yeah, so that's that's commitment for you. But um, here we go. Merry Christmas, Brian. I hope this package makes it makes it to you in one piece. I chose shiny blue wrapping paper because I'm pretty sure that mermaids are your spirit animal. I'm sure they are. Uh, anyway, here are a few things I picked throughout the year that you may like. You'll see I've marked one as being the last to be opened and that is simply because I think that this thing is pretty awesome. Anyway, thanks for being my podcast partner, something that I always wanted to do and something that I really enjoy and look forward to. And thanks for just being there when I needed to talk. I hope you have a great festive season. Best wishes. P.S. I typed this because my writing sucks. Hey! That kind of proves the point, doesn't it? And he's drawn a little Christmas face. A little, little face with a Christmas hat on. There's a lot to get through. This, this video might be longer than I was anticipating. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, now he did say he's marked one as last to open. Oh, here we go. Okay, open last. So I'll just put that to one side for a moment. Um, this is really exciting, I gotta say. I'm gonna put this box down a sec and open these one at a time. Um, <laughs> this is awesome. What have we got here? <laughs> what on earth? Okay, um, wow, okay, yeah, oh, this is Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Now, he um, he ended up with a few of these for, for, for various reasons, uh, which I won't go into, but uh, yeah, he, he said he had one going and he would send it to me, so I knew that was coming, um, but still, I, I, I always used to watch the Ray Harryhausen stuff when I was a kid, and I, 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 I'm not that bothered about them these days, but I would like to see what the transfer is like on Blu-ray. I want to see what that looks like on Blu-ray. And that one was actually my favourite as a kid. It's the one with Jane Seymour in. Um, I, I, yeah, I was, I was quite big on it. Um, <clears throat> a film called The Giver. Uh, now, I don't remember thinking that much of this when it came out but I do remember thinking it was better than Twilight. Actually, this is the one, something happens in this where it was a real, it, it kind of has that, um, what do you call it, for the, for the, the tween generation, I, I don't know what the, the terminology is. You know, when, when Twilight came out, they started making all those films in that vein. And I was watching this and I was thinking, well, great, you know, it's got two really great actors in it, Meryl Streep uh, and Jeff Bridges. Um, which kind of attracted me to it. And it was kind of along the lines of those type of things, but I remember something happening in it towards the end. I might be two thirds of the way through where I thought, oh, wow, that, that kind of takes it up a notch for this kind of film. So yeah, I, I, I'll give that another watch. I've just noticed as well, they've got, they've got a feature on here with 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 a singer from One Republic that I really like, actually. Uh, I like the band One Republic. So, right, anyway, enough of that. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Uh, <laughs> something Marvel, let's see. Okay, socks, always gonna work well, aren't they? Um, cracking, can I always use socks? Thank you, mate. Uh, <laughs> Man, I'm not even kidding. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more parcels to go. So I'll, I'll try and speed things up because this, this will get super long otherwise. Oh wow! Okay. So we've got we've got a tin, a Batman tin, but it's got a T-shirt in it, a Batman T-shirt. That's the design of the T-shirt on the back. I won't I won't, I won't bother getting it out just because. Well, you can see it there, that's what it is. But yeah, and a cracking tin to boot with a bat symbol on, which will no doubt at some point get hung on this backdrop. This feels like another one, another Batman tin. I'm, I'm guessing, I think, let's see. Oh, Star Wars, cracking, excellent. Um, wow, all right. Nice design as well, I must say, look at that. So we've got another t-shirt. Um, that's the design there, try and get it in focus. 
Darth Vader. Next up, I'm, get, I'm, I'm guessing probably some more socks because it's the same size as the package we opened there. It is. This time, not Marvel, it's Batman. Um, let's face it, you can't go wrong if it's got Batman on there. So these feel like Blu rays, um, which would make sense given our relationship. Oh! Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay, so this, this is a Blu ray from the Arrow series. Anyone who knows. Um, this this particular series of, of Blu-rays, they they basically just jam pack it with uh, with with special features, and they do really good transfers. And this is a Japanese film called Pulse, which I've not seen, but I, I I'm a fan of Japanese cinema. Uh, you know, I, I don't watch tons of Japanese movies, but the ones I've seen, I, recently I saw a film called Confessions that really stuck with me. Um, but yeah, I. That's a fantastic purchase. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, next one. Here we go. Oh. Okay. What's... Oh wow! All right. Cracking. I've... Devil's Double. Now I've, I've seen the trailer for this multiple times because it's, it's on other films that I've got. Um, and it looks really good. And my brother saw it way back when, when it came out, and he said it is really good. Um, so yeah, that's that's one I've been wanting to check out for quite some time, actually. Uh, cracking, awesome stuff. And Dominic Cooper's a really cool actor as well. Elite Squad. I've not heard of that one, but uh, it does say it's from the writer of City of God. And City of God, for anyone who's seen it, is a awesome film. Oh, and Jose Padilla. So this this is by, this is by Jose Padilla. Um, oh, Elite Squad. I know what this is now. I've got a friend actually who says that this was awesome. I remember talking to him about it um, before RoboCop because this is the guy who did the remake of RoboCop. Um, and yeah, when I looked into what other films he'd done, this popped up and I hadn't seen it, but my friend had and he says it's awesome. So again, yeah, we'll look forward to checking that out. Oh, it's another arrow, another arrow release. Let's have a look. Wow. Phenomena. Is this? It is. <laughs> okay. Phenomena. This is the Dario Argento film. Um, now, I do believe when we, when me and Graham were recording our podcast just the other night, that I said Dario Argento ain't my thing. But I've, I've only seen two of his works and one of them was when I was far too young to be watching it um, so yeah you know what maybe now is the time um, over on Killer Flicks the Facebook page they've been talking about Argento a lot recently so maybe this will be my introduction let's see uh, a bit nervous on that one must be said but uh, the, the, yeah I mean it's still an arrow release so there's a ton of really good stuff on there uh, special features wise a 50 minute long documentary. I'm always intrigued to see behind the scenes stuff on things. So that's cracking, I love it. Thank you. Um, there we go, next up, what have we got here? Hey, oh, right, cracking, love it. Okay, so this is the original carry, the Brian De Palma one. Uh, one of the better Stephen King adaptations, I feel. Uh, I, I tend to find that Stephen King, when he gets adapted, I mean, more recently, like this year, in fact, he's, he's had um, three adaptations that apparently have all been good. Two of them I've seen, I can confirm they are really good. And there's another one called 1922, I've not seen, but word is that's really good as well. Um, so this year has been a good year for Stephen King adaptations. However, for the most part, I tend to find that a lot of his work, particularly when it's very faithful to the books, isn't that great. Or, or it, it's good, but has a really poor ending. Um, but this, uh, mainly because it's, it's it's first and foremost a Brian De Palma film, he puts his stamp all over this. Um, I, I think it's one of, his, one of the best Stephen King adaptations. Um, and I don't own it, so cracking stuff. We're down to the open last package a bit nervous about this I, I want to like it I don't I, you know I don't want him to have the package that he saved till last and not and not be one that I'm like oh sorry don't really like it but here goes 
Let's see. Um, okay, a bit nervous. Let's have a look. Oh, limited edition. Oh, wow. What is this? Another arrow one. Oh, wow. Grief. Okay. <laughs> this is the second time, actually, that he sent me the thing. Um, first time around, if I can find it, he sent me this two pack, which 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 I've actually still not opened, because uh, we, we reviewed it over on Brits on Flicks uh, last year, the, the John Carpenter version. Obviously, just recently they they released this set, um, which I was kind of gutted by because when, when I own something already. I'm not that kind of person who feels compelled to go out and buy it again just because they released it on a special edition. A special edition. Um, but I gotta say, when it was released, I was a bit sad because I was like, oh, that looks like a real nice set, you know? Uh, and he's already bought it me, so like, so that's cracking. That that is that is awesome, mate. I love it. I mean, look at that artwork. Look at that box. That is a work of art in in and of itself. I love it. Um, and there's a really big book in there. Cracking. Absolutely cracking. That is fantastic, mate. Um, wow. Okay, what can I say? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I love it. I love all the, all these gifts. They're fantastic. Um, please do go and check out Graham's channel. It's called Man V Film. Uh, he's an absolutely solid guy, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends here on YouTube. Um, and check out our podcast because uh, we have an absolute ball recording it e even if nobody even if nobody ever listened to it we'd still carry on because we have so much fun doing it so yeah check those out definitely check out his channel thank you graham once again back over to well me i guess for for, for the continuation of the christmas special brian over to you Thank you, Brian, and thank you once again to Graham for sending me those excellent presents. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, back to my top five now. I'm going to get into my number four choice. My number four choice for, for my top five Christmas movies is A Christmas Carol. And this is the Robert Zemeckis film. Uh, he did a, a, like an animated version of it. Um, he, he, he's kind of done a lot of these films. I, I, he's dabbled in this kind of film quite a few times now at any rate. You know, he started with the Polar Express, uh, which is a good film, but suffered quite a lot from, from the animation around the eyes. You know, the, the eyes always look quite dead in that film, which, which kind of put me off a bit. Uh, he, he kind of improved on that a lot with Beowulf. But I feel like he perfected it with this film. I love this film. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I, I think it captures the Charles Dickens story perfectly. Uh, better than any other version in my book. Uh, I, I, I know some people would argue with that. Some people may even prefer my previous choice, Muppets Christmas Carol. I'm not going to argue with them. I think it's a subjective thing. I think Muppets Christmas Carol, as I said, is my number five choice. Uh, so if you, if you want to say that's better, Fair play to you. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't argue against that. Uh, you know, some people may prefer the Alistair Sim one. That tends to be the, the classic one that is held aloft for all of the Scrooge interpretations to beat. But me personally, I just love this one. I, I love the period detail, I love the production design. I know that sounds funny to say given it's an animated film, but you know, all, all that production, all that um, setting has to be designed and it is beautifully done. Uh, my only real criticism of the film is that because it was shot for 3D audiences, there are a couple of sequences in it where you can tell that they're designed for that purpose and they become these chase sequences, unnecessary chase sequences, you know, just to put a burst of action in there that can give you these 3D sequences. Uh, and for me, not needed. But beyond that, like I say, it happens a couple of times and... and it's minor, it's a minor quibble because everything else around it, which is the majority of the film, is just brilliant, absolutely beautiful. Uh, Jim Carrey excels in multiple roles. He takes on multiple roles throughout the film, does a really good job with all of them. Uh, even Carrie Elvez, Elvez, if that's, 
I think I'm probably butchering his name there. But he, he does a fine job on voice duty as well for Ghost of Christmas Present. Uh, yeah, I love the music to it. I love that they keep a lot of the religious elements, um, which for me is what Christmas is all about, the birth of Jesus and all that. Um, yeah, I, I just, I love it. It, it puts me in the Christmas spirit um, and yeah, you know, the, any interpretation of Scrooge really kind of kind of does that because it, it's just a timeless story really. But uh, but this particular version really gets me. So yeah, that's my number four choice, A Christmas Carol. Now, when I put the call out to, to invite certain guests onto this, uh, this episode, this special, um, I, I really just asked them to do whatever it is they wanted, you know, as, as long as they didn't go on and on for, forever. Uh, just, yeah, just a nice five minute video, something like that, about anything they wanted with regards to Christmas. Uh, so with that in mind, I'll bring on my next guest, which is Steve uh, from, from his channel, The Law Gnome. And he, he gives us a, a bit of a tour of his home city of New York. Steve, over to you. Hello everybody, it's The Law Gnome and welcome to a very special video. Um, this is actually going to be showing up in a lot of different YouTube channels because I was invited to do so. I was invited to basically talk about some of the things that make the holidays very special for me. Now. I may not be observing Christmas, I observe Hanukkah because of my Jewish faith, but I will say that I am so respectful and adore the holiday of Christmas, especially living in New York City, because for the city that never sleeps and one of the most intimidating concrete jungles in all of the world, one of the few things that I absolutely love about when the holidays come around is that it just feels a little bit warmer, a little bit nicer, people are a little bit friendlier, there's lots more smiles, there's music all over the streets, it is fantastic, and more importantly, a lot of the major stores, especially when everybody's doing their Christmas and holiday shopping, there is just beautiful colors and sights and songs everywhere. So I figured why not just do a little bit of a tour of me on my lunch break walks, doing a little bit of filming around New York City, particularly in areas like Rockefeller Center and some of the major department stores, and just show you what it's actually like to be in New York City during the holidays. It is quite awesome and so beautiful. And at the end, you will see a little treat of me observing my holiday. A little something just in case you've never seen it. So I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Kwanzaa, whatever holiday you are celebrating during this festive time, and enjoy your time with friends and family. Be safe, happy and healthy, and on with the video. Thank you, Steve, for that. That was wonderful. Uh, yeah, keeping in that vein, 
I recently shot a feature film and some of the footage I did for that was shot in and around my home city of Manchester. Uh, I don't actually live in Manchester but it's the closest city to me um, and I, I do kind of consider it home. It's, it's where I go for a lot of, a lot of jobs, things like that. Um, each of the towns I've lived in have always been around Manchester so yeah. I've always considered it my home city. So yeah, I, I went around there, I was shooting footage for, for this film, and you know, I, I decided I'll put some of that together in a bit of a showreel. If you want to see what Christmas looks like in my home city of Manchester, then here you go. There you go that is Manchester at Christmas I hope you liked that footage uh, just give you a little bit of a feeling and inkling of the area that I live in uh, a lot like many cities I guess but there you go it's it's mine um, next up is my number three choice for my top five Christmas movies and that choice is Kiss Kiss Bang bang. Uh, yeah, Shane Black. This is this is uh, the first film he directed. He'd written a lot of films before this. Obviously, Lethal Weapon springing to mind. But he is someone who likes to inject Christmas into his movies. At some point, there will be mention of Christmas, or it may even be set at Christmas for for some of the running time. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is set at Christmas for for all of its running time. Um, and yeah, it's it's probably not what most people would consider to be a traditional Christmas movie. But I, I to, to me, I, I yeah, I love it. I love that it takes this kind of detective story, a murder investigation, and sets it in and around Christmas. And you, and you, you see, I don't know, you just get that feeling, that Christmas feeling, goodwill to all, to all men and all that kind of stuff, kind of creeping into the story and the vibe of, of everything that's going on. Uh, it, it's... It may not be what most people consider to be a Christmas movie, and they may even prefer to go with something like Lethal Weapon over this if you're going to pick a Shane Black movie. But for me, yeah, it it just it reminds me of Christmas. It's set at Christmas. I love the movie itself. Uh, you know, I, this this is kind of in the same vein as L.A. Confidential. But whereas, like I said, LA Confidential kind of gives up on, on the Christmas angle uh, a third of the way in because they kind of get past Christmas Day by that point. Uh, this, this, this sticks with it. So you feel that vibe throughout, even though a lot of the stuff that is happening, you know, murders, gunfire, all that kind of thing isn't necessarily a Christmas thing. But what can I say? Uh, it's got a bit of a dark twist, but uh, yeah. I like it, it's a Christmas movie, and it's my number three choice. Next up, I've got another special guest for you. This is Jack from Jack's Channel of Stuff, and he is on here just to talk about some of his 
favourite Christmas films, the, the films that he watches every year around this time. Jack, over to you. What's going on Brian? Thank you very much for asking me to be part of your Christmas special video and for my portion I'm just going to talk about the films that I watch every year at Christmas because I pretty much watch the same films every single Christmas time so I'm just going to talk about those. First film I'm going to talk about is Elf, the Christmas classic that I think everybody likes. I've not met a person who has yet to dislike this film and this is a film that is just completely full of the Christmas spirit because Buddy, he's the elf, he believes he is an elf, so he's just spreading the Christmas spirit around every single person he meets, and it's just so infectious to watch, and it's just so entertaining to watch, because Will Ferrell completely embodies the character, and completely embodies the Christmas spirit. And it's also one of the best fish-out-of-water type films that I've seen, because you see Buddy the elf interacting with everything in New York City he's never interacted with before, you know, he bursts into the, uh, the coffee shop, you did it, congratulations! World's best cup of coffee. In terms of sheer Christmas spirit, I don't think any film comes closer to Elf. Next film I'm going to talk about is The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Now this is a semi-nostalgic film for me. I watched it once or twice when I was younger and I really like the story of this film because you have uh, Tim Allen who plays Scott Calvin. He's this guy who doesn't really care too much about Christmas and he knocks Santa Claus off the roof which is a pretty funny scene and then over time he starts becoming Santa Claus. The middle portion of the film is a little slow where he's becoming Santa. There's not really a lot of Christmassy field type to be had in there but the last act where he's actually Santa Claus and he's delivering the toys and he's trying to avoid the police and people think he's kidnapped his son when he's just taking him along for the ride I find it to be an entertaining Christmas film plus I love the chime like the kind of theme this film has that Christmassy chime to it to me that chime is pure Christmas and I love hearing it every time I watch this film. The next film I'm going to talk about is one of my favourite guilty pleasure films of all time. It is the classic Jingle All The Way. I actually watched this film the other night simply because I just wanted to watch it and be entertained. Yeah, it, it's a bad film, let's be honest. It's not that great of a film in terms of the story and also the last act where he's flying around in the Turbo Man costume. It is a bad film, but it's Arnold. If Arnold was not in this film, I wouldn't even be talking about it right now because he just elevates this and makes it so fun and so entertaining and it has some of the best Arnold quotes ever in this film. Where's your Christmas spirit? Put that cookie down! Now! It's funny as well because Jingle All The Way is like the least Christmassy film on this list in the sense that it doesn't like embody the Christmas spirit. It actually focuses on more the commercial aspect of Christmas and how stressful it can be for parents. But I kind of like that though. It shows a different side to the Christmas film and I enjoy seeing it, especially when everyone's like rising in the toy shop and throwing toys around, shelves are falling down. It's entertaining as hell. I love it. It's one of my favourite guilty pleasures of all time. I watch it every single Christmas without fail. And last but not least, I know I'm not going to be the only person talking about this, but when you're talking about Christmas films, you can't not mention these two films, Home Alone 1 and Home Alone 2. Without fail, every year I watch these for Christmas. These two films are some of the most nostalgic and memorable films of my life. I remember watching these two films when I was younger, and just the script for both these films, the dialogue, all Im embedded into my brain. Is Home Alone 2 pretty much the same film as Home Alone 1? Yeah, it is, more or less, but I still love it because it's still nostalgic and it's still entertaining. I love both of these films. Home Alone 1's definitely the better film, in my opinion. Home Alone 2 gets a bit dark, in my opinion. It's like really dark with some of the themes, like the musical themes in there, but both films are still really great family films to watch and, uh, like I said, extremely nostalgic. The Somewhere in My Memory theme by John Williams is one of the best musical themes ever composed for a film, I think. I listen to it every year at Christmas and it just fills me with Christmas joy and spirit. Home Alone 1 is my favourite Christmas film of all time. Home Alone 2, pretty close second. So those are the films that I watch every year at Christmas. I know it's not a lot, I probably should watch a bit more and expand a little bit, but those are like the core films that I watch more or less every single Christmas and I love watching them every single year. Thanks once again Brian for having me on your special Christmas video. Merry Christmas to all of you and have a happy new year. Let's make it a good one. Thank you, Jack, for that. Some great choices there, many of which I reviewed last year in my 31 Days of Christmas. Uh, yeah, I can, I can understand why some of those made your list. Uh, excellent stuff. Uh, okay, let's get into my number two choice for my top five Christmas movies, and that is going to be 
Die Hard. Yep, another slightly controversial choice. I know a lot of people get bent out of shape by is is this a Christmas movie? Isn't it a Christmas movie? It's clearly a Christmas movie, okay? It takes place at Christmas. There is a big ass Christmas tree in the office. The people that are there are having a Christmas party. Uh, it's a Christmas movie, you know, and you know, we get snow in various scenes of it. And and yeah, I just I like that, again, we, we've got that film that is really dealing with the everyman and his his sacrifice, I guess, his, his you know, this is his Christmas time. And he, he gives that up to save all these people, to save his wife uh, during a, a terrorist kind of hijacking of this Nakatomi Plaza. Yeah, again, OK, not traditionally what you think of when you think of Christmas, but it does. It puts me in the Christmas spirit. When I watch this, I sit down and it, it, it screams Christmas movie to me. It's action, it's bloodshed, uh, it's violent. But I don't know, maybe that says something about my nature. Although I think my number one choice will do something to correct that. But yeah, die hard for those who want to argue against uh, feel free to do so. But for me, it is a Christmas movie. It's the best outing from John McClane. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just a damn good movie overall, Christmas or not. Uh, but yeah, for me, it is a Christmas movie. Next up, we've got my next special guest, which is Rachel Wagner from Rachel's Reviews. Uh, yep, I asked her to come on talk about well, what, like I say, whatever she wanted to talk about. Um, and yeah, she's talking about movies, but with a slight slight difference, little twist, I guess. Uh, and I, so I, I'll leave it for her. To, to tell you what that is. Uh, Rachel, over to you. Hi everybody. So this is so fun to get to be on Brian's channel. Rachel and from Rachel's Reviews and I am kind of the queen of Christmas and I love Christmas movies. I really love or have an affection for uh, like made for TV kind of cheesy Christmas movies and uh, my friend Amber and I have started a podcast uh, on these movies. Over in the United States there's a channel called Hallmark Channel and uh, they had this season 33 uh, made-for-TV Christmas movies, original. In They started uh, at the, actually started on October 27th, and all that time, 33. And so it's pretty amazing. Fun for my contribution to this little little thing that Brian's doing to give my five favorite Hallmark Christmas movies all time, of all time. So here we go. I'm gonna try to go through this pretty quickly. Number five for me on the list is called The Christmas Detour. And this one's a lot of fun. It has, uh, it stars Candace Cameron Bure, who's kind of the queen of Hallmark, one of the queens. <laughs> and she uh, is just got engaged. She has her whole life kind of planned out. Everything's perfect. But she happens to, she's going to New York to visit her new in-laws. And she ends up sitting next to the dashing Paul Green, who is very handsome. And uh, they end up getting uh, detoured to Buffalo and all kinds of shenanigans occur. They have great chemistry. It's just really fun. The whole cast is really good in it. So that's my number five. Number four is called A Family for Christmas. And this is kind of a take on It's a Wonderful Life. It's kind of a take on The Family Man. But it stars Lacey Chabert, another queen of Hallmark. And she, uh, she chose, uh, she reached a point when she was in college, she had this college boyfriend and she decided to kind of follow a career instead of uh, following and going with him. And so now she has uh, got this job as a reporter. Well, one day she wakes up and she has this, she's had this Christmas wish and she wakes up and she is all of a sudden married to this college boyfriend and has like three kids and could still experience what her life would be if she'd taken this other choice. So very similar to a family man with Nicolas Cage. It's really charming. It's really sweet. And uh, I think you'll like it. Number three is more of a dramatic film. It's called November Christmas. This is probably one of the best casts that Hallmark has ever had. It, it stars John Corbett, Sarah Paulson, Karen Allen, and Sam Elliott. And John Corbett and Sarah Paulson are parents to this little girl who's gotten cancer. And the little girl is so good in this role. And everybody's good. All the acting's really good. And it's basically they decide to kind of speed everything up. And they get the whole town involved <clears throat> so that this girl can have uh, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas early in the year. And it's really sweet and lovely. And especially Sam Elliott is really nice in it. It does a good job. So that one, if you want more of a tearjerker, there you go. 
the next one is one from this year that I just fell in love with and I think is so great. It's called Christmas at Angel Falls. And this stars Rachel Boston, who's another queen of Hallmark. She's great. And she plays this angel who uh, is sent to the town of Angel Falls and who, that has lost its Christmas spirit, which we know is a very bad thing. And uh, her like angel supervisor is played by Will Bridges. And this is kind of a take on the preacher's wife or um, the bishop's wife kind of story. And so she ends up meeting Paul Green, once again, second time on this countdown. And uh, he's kind of this like uh, handyman slash fireman slash everything. And he's great and they have great chemistry. And of course she's an angel, you know, what's gonna happen? She can't fall in love with what is Paul Green. Anyway, it's really charming, it's really sweet. And it's all about sort of free will and letting people kind of find Christmas again. And so that's Christmas at Angel Falls. And then my number one favorite Hallmark movie, Christmas movie, it's called Trading Christmas. This is similar to The Holiday, but I think it's as good, if not better. Uh, it stars uh, Faith Ford and Tom Cavanaugh are, are sort of the leads, and they decide to switch houses. She goes to Boston, it's supposed to be with her daughter, but her daughter's actually gone. And uh, so she's sort of alone in Boston, and he's like in Ohio, and he's trying to finish this book. He's got writer's block. And she ends up meeting his brother, played by Gil Bellos, and they have huge chemistry. It's so good. It has a great heart to it. And then he ends up meeting Gabriel, Gabriel uh, Miller, and uh, she kind of ends up helping him with her. She kind of ends up helping him with his book. And it's really charming. They have great chemistry, too. And I might even prefer it to the holiday, to be honest. It's just... It's just really fun. I even like her daughter and uh, her daughter's boyfriend, played by Andrew Francis, who I love. So it's just a really wonderful little Christmas movie with a nice message, good heart, and um, great chemistry, great romance. So there you go. That's my top five favorite Hallmark Christmas movies I've ever seen. So there you go. Hope you have fun. Merry Christmas, and, uh, and good luck. Uh, and thanks again, Brian, for letting me be on your channel. And uh, bye. Thank you, Rachel, for that. Yeah, some, some rather different choices there, I think. Please do go and check out her channel and her podcast. Um, yeah, Hallmark. They they do do a lot of Christmas movies each year, don't they? Um, I, I've seen a couple. I can't say I'm an expert on them by any stretch. Um, they do tend to be quite cheesy. So if cheese is your thing, I, I, I guess those, those kind of movies would be right up your street. I know my mother-in-law loves them. I go around to my mother-in-law's on, on around Christmas time, and yeah, she's she's always got one of those bad boys on. With that, let's get into my number one choice for for my uh, for my Christmas movies. Um, if you if you watched my Thirty One Days of Christmas last year, you'll probably be very aware of what that choice is, um, given how much I bigged this movie up. Uh, but yeah, it is. It's a Wonderful Life, a film by Frank Capra. I reviewed it last year, like I say, so I won't get into it too much, only to say that I just love it. Um, you know, I, I actually watched it today uh, when I filmed this video. Obviously, I'm, f I'm filming this just a little bit in advance. I uh, sat down with my wife, we watched it, our regular kind of, you know, we, like I say, we watch it every year. I, I watch it every year, you know, regardless. Sometimes my wife can't watch it with me for various reasons. But yeah, I will watch this every year without fail. It's my favorite Christmas movie. It just fills my heart with joy. Um, and there's so many scenes throughout that just choke me up, you know? Uh, Cause you got this story about this man who's just so good. He wants to escape this town. He wants to, to have a life, have adventure, but things in this town just keep stopping him because he's so good hearted. You know, he always stays to help people. Rather than thinking about himself, he always helps other people. He always puts other people first. Um, and like I say, so many great scenes. The scene with Mr. Gower, you know, this druggist who nearly poisons a child because he's so so grieving for the loss of his own child that he doesn't see that he's, he's put the wrong uh, the wrong drug in this in this box and just that moment when when the young George Bailey helps him to see that and it's just it just ah oh, it just it has me in tears my wife was in tears when we were watching it and but many scenes like that throughout uh just yeah 
excellent story, really beautiful. I never tire of watching it. I, I think I will, you know, sometimes. I, I, I put it in and I'm always like, is this going to be the time? Is this going to be the time where I stick It's a Wonderful Life on and I'm just bored because I've seen it too many times? And it never happens, ever. It still chokes me up, still gets me emotional. Uh, it's, it's one of the best films ever made in my mind, not just one of the best Christmas films ever made. Uh, I love it. Frank, Frank Capra, I, I just love his style. I love that he, he embraces sentiment and he uses it in the right way. Uh, yeah. Definitely a five out of five from me with that one. My favourite Christmas movie of all time. Well, that's it. That brings us to the end of this very low max Christmas. Uh, I, I hope you like it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope there's been enough variety for you that you get something out of it. Uh, yeah. I've had fun making it. Thank you once again to all my guests who've been on. Uh, thank you once again to Graham for sending me those wonderful gifts. Uh, and to you out there, have an absolutely wonderful Christmas. May God bless you. Thank you for watching, and until next time, cracking.